This is depth tracking. In simple words, it's detecting uh, how far the objects are. Uh, hi, my name is Sergio and I help companies, students and freelancers to easily and efficiently apply visual recognition to their projects. In this specific video today, we're going to see a really interesting device which I've just got and it is the OpenCV AI Kit version D. And we're going to use this one uh, on Windows. So uh, we will see two things. We'll see first how to install this on Windows. And second, we will see some of the characteristics of this device and how to run them. Especially we will see object detection first, face detection and depth tracking. Depth tracking is really cool. So I suggest you to stay till the end of the video. So let's start. One of the nice things about this device is that there is a large community behind it and there are already many different models that we can download and just run easily on this one. And also the installation, it comes really easy to make. So we proceed with the installation. We can do the installation in two steps. First one, we go on GitHub uh, slash Luxonics slash AI. By the way, all the links and Python commands that I'm telling you right now, you will find them on the link below in the description. There will be the link to my blog with all the instructions. So first one, you go on this link. We download this module, Depth AI. So download zip. You can download this one wherever you want. I'm going to put this one on the desktop. Uh, once it's downloaded, of course, we need to extract this one to access the file. So I will extract again this one inside the desktop so that we have the folder depth dash main. And if we open this one, we will see all the files that this folder is containing. And there is a specific file that we want to run and it's install requirements.py. So we need to run this file with Python and the easiest way to do this is with the prompt command of Windows. So I'm going to copy this path and I do CD for change. Uh, sorry, first of all, let's open the command prompt. I had already this one open. So command prompt, you open this one, then it starts with the default folder, but we need to access the folder where we have that AI. So we type CD, which stands for change folder. We copy the folder where that AI is. So in my case, it's desktop, that AI main. We copy this one, and then we click with the right button of the mouse right here to paste the folder. And here we see the new folder. Once we are inside the folder, we just run Python and then uh, there is the file install requirements.py. Install requirements.py. And we press and of course you need to make sure that you have Python already installed. I'm going to give that for granted. Uh, by the way, Python should be already by default on Windows. So this shouldn't be a problem. Uh, in my case, everything was installed already as I, uh, I've already used this one. In your case, it might take uh, some longer time to complete the installation as it has to download all the libraries. The installation is complete. To make sure that everything is working correctly, the easiest way is just to run this one. So make sure that you have your device connected. So now I have this on a tripod. But, um, but more specifically, this the cables. So we have the uh, USB-C connected right here and connected to the computer and also the power supply connected to the socket with the current uh, energy. And once everything is fine, we run Python, then depth AI underscore demo.py and we press enter. Uh, now at the first run, so this is the demo. The first run is going to download the mobile net 
SSD model, so it's going to take a while to download the files and to run this. It depends on the speed of your connection. And I'm going to pause this one, and once it's running, we will be back. Oh, uh, and now it's running. By the way, it takes some time, so if it can take sometimes, I don't know for which reason, honestly, sometimes uh, loads the model really fast. Sometimes it takes one, two minutes to uh, before running. Uh, I believe as there, they just recently launched this device also, there may be some of the things they need also to work with the libraries. So probably in the next months, a uh, few more things will be clear and will be improved, definitely. Here we have now uh, the SSD model. SSD is a single shot detector, so it's detecting right now person, it's me. So you see when I move, it's detecting. And we have the frames per second. This is 30 frames per second, it's fast. But keep in mind, there are two things about uh, with FPS. One is frame per second of the camera. So this frame per second now it's setting always to 30 FPS. And also the, there is frame per second of the neural network. And there are two different things that uh, we might see this also in some other videos, but pretty much the model which is a uh, process of the object detector has one FPS, the camera is a separate FPS. So sometimes the detection of the model can be slow, but still you have a high frame rate from the camera. This is uh, enough for the installation. We will jump right now into seeing some example on how to use this one. There are many things that we can do with this, but for this video, we're going to focus only on three of them. Three, uh, object detection, face detection, and depth tracking. So let's start having a look at them. Let's now run object detection on the OpenCV AI kit. Uh, we need to make sure again that we are inside the folder depth AI main, because we will be running the files from this folder. So if you just run Python from the command prompt of Windows right away, it will not work unless you are inside depth AI main whatever you put the folder. In my case, it's desktop, that the I main, then Python, and again, we run depth AI underscore demo dot pi, but we can now choose what to run. So we have different neural network models that we can run right away. We put dash CNN, which stands for convolutional neural networks. And there is a list which I'm going to show you right now uh, the list is this one uh, that we can access on GitHub. I will put the link with this list just on my blog. So in that case, check just on the description, the link to the blog. And we have different models that we can run, uh, different really interesting models. We have age, gender recognition. We have emotion recognition, face detection, facial landmarks detection, human pose estimation, uh, let me show something else, mobile net SSD, pedestrian detection, uh, tiny YOLO, vehicle detection, and a few other things. Now, how do you know which one is object, object detection and which one is not? It's not explicitly said this is object detection, but if you know the models, for example, mobile net is an object detection model, tiny YOLO is an object detection model, YOLO v3 is an object detection model. And in this case, we're just running the most basic one, which is mobile net SSD. How do we do that? Simply, we just need to take the exact name that we see here on this list. So as we want mobile net dash SSD, after CNN, we type mobile net slash SS, uh, dash SSD, and we press enter. Mobile net is a model that can detect 20 different categories. Uh, I don't remember exactly now the object, but let me read from the list. We can detect, for example, airplanes, bicycles, bear, boat, bottle, bus, car, cat, chair, cow, dog, horse, motorbike, and a few other things. And I have some of the pictures that I want to try on the mobile phone. So I'm going to uh, give you a look of how this works. By the way, person, you see person is correctly detected. 
then we have cat and you see cat horse 100% also we have the accuracy of the detection then we have bicycle airplane and I have only these pictures right now but as you see it works quite well right away how do we switch to another model if we want to quit we just press the letter Q and this is going to stop then we try now a second phase detection so we run Python then again depth AI underscore demo dot pi dash CNN CNN and we go right here and we choose another model we have two different detection models I will run I will not get into details about why one instead the other this is just a demo that we're running we will just run the first one phase detection ADAS 001 which I'm not able to copy exactly. So, okay, I will copy exactly this name. So, copy, and we need to paste the exact name right here. And I'm going to press now enter. In this case, there is not the model downloaded. So, it downloaded the model, which was really fast. It's already downloaded. And let's wait a few seconds to run. And as you see, we're now running face detection. Oh, there is a face detected behind. So it's not probably so precise. He is detecting a face that it's not, it doesn't exist. But anyway, we have face detection. Uh, as you see, we have 30 FPS. The uh, is really smooth. So the camera is working really well, but the face detection, there is some lag on the face detection. So you see the, a square surrounding my face is not uh, just on time exactly because we see the camera is processing the frames 30 frames per second so the, what you see the video is really smooth while the neural network is detecting the face at around 10 frames per second so that's why there is some small lag between it uh, I want to conclude this one with one of the most inter interesting things that uh, I find about this device, which is the depth tracking. So let me close this one. We're not now running uh, specifically any uh, neural network model, but instead run Python uh, depth AI underscore demo dot pi. Uh, then we want to say, okay, this is how uh, they show on their documentation is the way to display uh, the depth tracking. Uh, so as for streaming meta out, uh, we need to define this because there are different display modes that uh, we will not see right now. That's only once we'll get more in depth about uh, how to use a more feature about the OpenCV AI kit. For the moment, let's just copy what we have right here. So meta out depth <laughs> underscore row and then dash BB and let's press enter. And let's have a look now on what we see. So this is depth tracking. In simple words, it's detecting uh, how far the objects are and uh, we're displaying this with a heat map so the closer the object the color is closer to yellow the when the object is farther it gets red till becoming black uh, let's take for example my hand if i put the hand just uh, around now it's around 40 centimeters from the camera probably you don't see it well but here it's written uh, Z 0 0.38 meters. So it's around 40 centimeters from the camera. When I go farther, you see this number is increasing. So now we see around 60 centimeters from the camera and so on. Uh, we have also here a threshold value. So if we can also hide the elements that are too far, 
for example now I can display only the closer element so it's only me and there is no background what use of useful things can you do with this well for example if you want to remove yourself from the background without any green screen you can do that because you are the closer element if you can say a little closer to the camera while the screen is far so you can easily use this one for segmentation without the green screen you can uh, use this one on a commercial project if for example you want to pick objects with a robot arm and you uh, you need to know the distance from the arm to the object that's really important if you don't want to smash the ob uh, the object with the arm also for emotion tracking with the depth camera you can recognize the motion on a more advanced way with just a normal camera because the face is not uh, it's not two dimensional but there is a perspective so we need to keep that also in mind and you can do that with a depth camera for example you see that my nose is more yellow than the elements around so that my cheek because the nose is closer to the camera than the cheek because of the perspective <laughs> because it's closer of course uh, i hope you enjoyed this lesson let me know some project that you would like to see done with the open cv kit and i will read all the comments and i will pick some ideas and this might be another video in the future i want to remember that for contracting consulting services and courses you can always access my website pysource.com this is all for this video see you in the next video